Today you're going to learn how to create a soft brown earthy tone in your edits using Lightroom. So let's get started. Hello friends, my name is Brennan from BeWillCreative.com and on this channel we love to talk about photography, photo editing, and all of that good stuff. So that sounds like something that you would be into. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. So today we're going to talk about how to make brown and earthy tones in Lightroom using five simple steps. The first step is using the white balance and vibrance, then we'll go into the tone curve, HSL, color balance, and finally color calibration. We'll go through each of these steps individually so you'll understand why we're actually doing them, but then overall by the end of this video you'll have a easy workflow that you can use to add brown tones to any photo that you want to edit in Lightroom. So with all that let's hop on the computer and see how to do it. So step number one is we're going to adjust the white balance and the vibrance. And since we're wanting that warm and muted look, we're going to first bring up the white balance just a little bit like so. And then to make sure that we maintain that earthy muted look, we're going to bring down the vibrance just a touch as well. So then it's just giving a nice starting point for our image. Now to further accentuate that soft brown look, we're going to add a matte look to this photo and we can do that with the tone curve. And that brings us into step two. So making sure that you're using the point curve rather than the region curve. So clicking on this option right here, we'll go to the shadows, which is the bottom point and just drag that up like so. And it's going to lift the bottom levels of our shadows to make them look a little bit more matte like this. So if you want to go crazy, you can bring it up a lot. But in this case, I just want to add something subtle like this. And then I'll add a little bit more contrast back in by bringing down those shadows and then maybe adjusting the midtones slightly as well. Turning that on and off, you can see that it just softens some of those dark areas and I think it looks really nice for the final effect when you're editing with brown tones. Going into step number three, we have our HSL adjustments and obviously we want to change these colors to favor a more brown hue and the colors that you're going to want to use is going to be mostly the greens, yellows, oranges, and reds. However, you can experiment with all of these color sliders if you wish. Starting in the hue option here, to make life easy, I'm going to click on the sample option here and now I can click to sample a color in the grass, so I'll just click this random green here and now I can drag this up or down to change the hue of that sampled color. So in this case it's changing all those similar hues in the grass. I'm going to drag that down so it favors a yellow color which is going to lead us to the browns eventually. So noticing how it has adjusted our greens we can then go and further adjust the yellows to bring that down as well. And then if we go to the orange it kind of affects her skin tone a lot in this image so I don't want to go too crazy with this otherwise she looks like she has a bad sunburn or something. So I'm just going to drag that down a touch but not too much and then finally for the reds that's really affecting her lipstick and since I want that to not be so noticeable I'll drag up those reds. Now again the exact amount that you use for your hue saturation and luminance adjustments will depend on the photo that you're using. From there I notice a few little problem areas with the bluer tints within the grass. So I'll again sample those colors by clicking on the sample option, clicking on that problem area grass, and now I can begin to adjust it like so. In this case, it seems like just dragging it down will do the job for me, and that was targeting the aqua hue. From there we can go to the saturation, and again we can click on the sample option just because it makes life so easy and fast, and then we can sample that color in the grass, we can drag that up or down depending on how noticeable you want that brown to look. Right now the grass looks a little bit more yellow, but eventually that will turn into a brown look with later adjustments, so right now you just want to pick how saturated you want it to look. Of course you can come back and change this later on if need be. In this case I kind of like this slightly desaturated look like so and then I'll go to the aqua color that problem area and I can play around with that to see what kind of options it gives me. In this case I kind of like the desaturated look as well there. Lastly we can go to the luminance option and this is going to change how bright or dark a certain color range will look so you can make different areas in your photo pop really easily. Just like before we will click on the sample color option, click somewhere on the grass and we can change how bright or how dark that is and in this case I'm just going to bring that up just a touch from where we were so it is in the negative values but this is kind of looking good for the idea that I was going for. Again the amount you used will depend on the kind of style that you're into and the photo that you're editing. 
So now that we're done with step number three, the HSL adjustments, we've turned all of that green grass into something favoring a more yellow and brown tone, and that sets us up really well for step number four, which is color grading. Now I've talked all about how to use the color grading tool in a separate tutorial that you'll definitely wanna check out if you haven't used this tool or you're not sure how it works very well. In that tutorial, I discuss exactly how to use all of these tools as well as how they affect your image, but for now, we're just going to be talking about them in terms of creating this brown look. So if you wanna learn how to use this color grading tool a little bit more, then you can check out the tutorial down in the description below. Anyways, continuing on here, we'll start with our mid-tone slider here in the three-way view, and we basically wanna add sandy brown tones. So that's gonna be yellows, oranges, or something in between. So clicking on the mid-tones color wheel, I'll go and find a nice orange color for this one. Now, as I go further towards the edge, it's gonna add more saturation to that hue, but to make life easy, you can hold the shift key and it locks it in so you can only move your color picker in the direction of saturation so that you can't change the actual hue at all. So for me, I'm gonna just do something like this right in the middle. And then I'll go to my shadows. In the shadows, I wanna add something slightly darker. I don't wanna to go too crazy with it, but some kind of dark orangey hue. Something like that looks nice. And then I can play around with the saturation, once again, holding the shift key. So just a slight red hue. And then finally, the highlights option. I'm gonna to try to add a nice sandy color. So this kind of yellowy light orange here. And then again, I can hold the shift key to increase or decrease the saturation depending on the look that you're into. Something like that looks pretty good to me. And to touch everything up here, we'll use the balance and blending sliders, which help to refine these three colors and how they blend into your image. Starting with the blending option, I'll just go all the way up and then all the way down, see which kind of option I like the best. In this case, I kind of like just a little bit of increase on the blending. And then now going to balance, I can go back and forth again to see what kind of options I have. And from there, I can decide to maybe bring down the balance just a little bit. Now from here, turning that adjustment on and off, it's made a huge difference in adding that brown look to our photo. But there's one last step and that brings us into step number five, which is the color calibration down here. Now in this tool, you basically have the different color ranges, the R, G, and B, red, green, and blue, color ranges that make up all of the colors you see in your photo. You can change the hue and the saturation of each of those color ranges. However, for this effect, I just like to change the saturation of the red primary and the green primary. So clicking on that slider, I'll just drag that down a touch like so, and then I'll go to my green primary saturation and drag that down a little as well to give it a more muted, nice, soft look to the overall photo. Now with that, our brown tones are complete. You can go back through any of the adjustments and fine tune things, depending if you want it to look a little more saturated or contrast or whatever you're into, you can always go back and make those adjustments through all the tools that we talked about so far. But looking at that before and after, we have a very nice difference between the two and has completely transformed the photo in a relatively short amount of time. All right guys, so that is how you can create brown and earthy tones in Lightroom really quickly using five simple steps. All of these adjustments are very simple to use, but the HSL and the color balance adjustments are definitely the heroes when creating this effect. Again, if you wanna learn how to use the color balance adjustment a little bit more effectively, then make sure to check out my previous tutorial all about that down in the description below. You really won't wanna miss that because there's a ton of amazing information in that one. Anyways, that's all I have for you for today. Again, my name is Brendan from bewellcreative.com, and if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like this one. And with that, I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.